Hi, I'm Steve Corona, and I'm your host for this virtual internship. We're speaking today with Jarrell Davenport. He is a barber and owner of Jarrell's Barbershop. And we're going to be talking to him a little bit about how you too might become a barber. So tell me about Jarrell's Barbershop. Sounds like a really interesting place to get a haircut. Well, hi, Steve. Um, Jarrell's Barbershop, we're located at 2104 South Clinton Street here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I like to think that it's a, a nice place to get a haircut. We service all types. Uh, we do long hair, short hair, hot towel, razor shaves, and all. There's four barbers here in total. And I like to think that Jarrell's Barbershop is a good place to get a haircut. So what are the essential skills and qualities that it takes to operate your own barbershop? Well, first of all, you have to, you have to complete school. Our Good. state requires 1,500 hours of a uh, barber college. Do you have to go to Indianapolis for that, or can you do it elsewhere? When I started out, um, we had to go to Indianapolis, but now there's two schools here in Fort Wayne that you can, uh, you can attend. In addition to going to the school, is there additional experience that a barber needs? Well, there's, there's nothing like hands-on experience. Like you, with the 1,500 hours of school, you're required to do so many haircuts and things like that, but you, you really gain the experience when you, when you get out here in the workforce. Uh, you, there's a lot of, lot of experience gained. So um, what can someone expect to earn in their first year of business? You're, you're building a customer base I've got to believe that uh, earnings um, are going to be tough. Well, there, there are uncertainties. Um, it's a per client cash base service. So you pretty much, you're, it deter it's determined by yeah. how you build a clientele and you know how many family members and friends and that type of thing support. Um, but there are uncertainties and it's just, it's just something that you have to stick, stick with. So we've got some high school students and some middle school students that are looking at this video and they're, they're thinking about the, the revenue side and the earnings side. So in five years, what might a barber make? Not an owner of a barber shop, but what might a barber make? Well, it really depends on how much effort you want to put into it. But I'm, I will say that I've been barbering on almost 30 years and, and I've been satisfied with this profession. I mean, it's just benefited, it's prospered me in more ways than one, not only financially, but it, it's allowed me relationships and, and, and friend building and, and networking that, that you don't normally get everywhere. It's more than just money. It's more than just money. So tell me about the duties and responsibilities of becoming a barber. What do you have to pay attention to every day, every customer? Well, first of all, you have to complete the, the, the schooling. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, I think, I think it's very important to build relationships and to, pra to practice professionalism, um, whether it be being prompt with service, being on time with your services, uh, and, and building relationships, I feel, is very important to this profession. What's a typical work day, work week like for you? Is it five days, six days? Is it, is it a long day? Tell me a little bit about your hours. Well, I've, I put a lot into it. Um, like I said, I'm going on 30 years and I, right now at this point, I, I pretty much work five days a week, um, sometimes six or seven, just for a couple of clients, selected clients that couldn't get in mm -hmm. during that time. Uh, and I'm putting, so I'm putting in probably 60 hour work weeks and that's just because it's something that I like to do. You said that you've had some customers in, in, from your entire career, but do you also have new customers that are walking into your shop? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, we believe that, that uh, word of mouth is the best advertisement. And so, you know, and that's why I believe that it's important to build relationships and the network. Uh, and so there's, there's walk-ins that come in off, often, and then also, yeah, we gain new clients every day in this profession. I know young people are thinking, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grow up and own my own business, whatever that might be. 
you own your own business. Tell me about some of the challenges and responsibilities that you have in keeping this shop open. Well, there's, there's responsibilities. Um, the responsibility of the overhead and the upkeep and, you know, keeping things together. But I think if it's something that's in your heart to do, it's, it's, it's definitely something to pursue. I think the responsibility is, is minute compared to yeah. the satisfaction. What's the most important aspect of owning your own business? Uh, in my opinion, it goes back to professionalism and, and networking and building relationships. Okay, so I'm a young student again and I'm trying to figure out if I'm doing a good job or not. How do you evaluate performance, your own and then um, of other people around you? Uh, that's a good question. I, I think that it'd be valued with uh, the repeat client, you know, are they coming back or right. are they, you know, are they advertising or speaking about the service and the haircut that they received? This is a very personal attention, the, the service that you're providing. So how, how do you engage in making sure that with a new customer, you're doing it right yet, that you're cutting that customer's hair to his satisfaction. Do you have that conversation before, during, after? How, tell me how that works. Well, I, I don't feel like you should put too much pressure on yourself. Um, you, you went to school, you got the schooling, right. uh, you, you, you should be pretty much prepared for, for the task that's at hand, the haircut that's at hand. And then, you know, when the, when the service is done, you, you generally give the client the mirror and see if they're satisfied with what you've done. And, and, and if not, if there's something that they want you to do additionally, then you just try to, try to make it right. So that mirror really is instant feedback. Oh yeah, the mirror tells the story. <laughs> so uh, are there opportunities for advancement? I mean, and again, I'm thinking of someone who's a barber but are there opportunities for advancement in this profession? Yes, I believe the sky's the limit in this profession. Um, what are some of the can, steps? As far as advancing, uh, if you want to, you, you, you know, you can build clientele mm -hmm. via advertisement right. or, you know, again, word of mouth, building relationship, handing out business cards and that type of thing. But then you also, you can go as far as you want and as far as, you can be a multi-shop owner, mm -hmm. or there's many different ways. The, the sky's the limit in this building, in, in this business, determine, you know, depending on how much effort and time you want to put into yeah. it. Jarrell, is there a typical career path for most barbers? I mean, you know a lot of barbers, and um, is there that satisfaction in being a barber and, and working in your shop or someone else's shop? Tell me a little bit about that career path. Well, you determine that. Uh, you determine what road you want to take, you know, as far as what are your goals, what are you, what are you planning to accomplish. Are you, you know, different, there's different goals for different barbers. You know, some barbers may be satisfied with cutting, I don't know, 15, 20 heads a week, and that may do it for them. And then others, you know, others may have more lofty goals, you know, may want to own a barber shop, may want to, so that path, in my opinion, differs according to the person. Yeah. So, um, based upon those various opportunities and future options, um, are there organizations or ad advanced training, ongoing training that would help a barber move up in the profession? Yes, I mean, the, the internet is, is a valuable resource now. Um, there's YouTube. And then some of the things that I like, there's there, before the whole COVID thing, there was like uh, barber showcases and barber uh, competitions in different cities and things like that. So you're able to see what other barbers are doing and hair styles? Yeah, you can, you could see that. You could see that on YouTube. You could see that on the internet. Um, some of the social media sites, you can, you can see those things. But then as far as the, the barber competitions, you physically go to those and there, there's classes that are available to barbers if you desire to be a part of the classes. And then there's also just the experience of the competitions and uh, the vending and uh, it's very, very helpful. I'm just curious with, with your customers today, 
Um, is there a certain cut, a certain look that your customers prefer than say 10 years ago? Actually, I like this time um, now because there's such a diversity of haircuts. When I first started out, you know, there would, there would be one style or a couple styles that were, that were dominant. Um, but now, you know, there's many different, different hairstyles. Do young people prefer a certain cut more so than, say, some of your older customers? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The young, young, as you know, young people have a style of their own. Um, but again, this, this profession affords, uh, it, prefer, it affords uh, a lot of, what's the word that I'm looking for? Creativity, okay. you know, especially nowadays. Nowadays you, you can be creative because there's many different hairstyles. So we're going to be showing this video to middle school students and high school students at Prince Chapman and East Allen, and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do after high school. What advice would you give them about considering um, a career as a barber? Well, I would encourage them to, that if this is something that they think they might want to do, to, to research it, look into it, speak with other barbers in, in the city, um, and, and find out if that's the path that they want to take. You know, not, like I said, not everyone is in, intended to go to college, but the skilled trade is a, is a good option. Would you invite some students to come and shadow you for a couple of hours and get to know what it's like to run a business like this? I welcome students to, to come into the barbershop and, and, and not only watch me work, but then watch the, the barbers that we have here work. Uh, we have a very gifted and talented staff of barbers, and um, they're welcome here. Any final thoughts? Any thoughts about uh, what you do and, and uh, thoughts for young people considering their options after high school? Well, I like to uplift the profession. Uh, again, barbering has been good to me. It's been good to my family, and it's, it's, it's gave me an option uh, of a career path and I've enjoyed it and I would encourage people that are on the fence about what they want to do in life to consider this profession. You know there are several Hollywood movies that glamorize the barbershop. Have you seen any of them and are any of them your favorite movies or is it not even close to the reality that you know every day? I've seen a lot of barbershop, not only barbershop movies, but movies that have like barbershop segments in it. Yeah. And, and I'm encouraged by it. Uh, it is a place, uh, I think one movie called it uh, a country club, a, men, a men's social country club, a men's gathering. And the barbershop is a place where there's all types of conversations. You know, we don't gossip and things not a lot or none of that, but there's all type of conversations. and. And uh, the movies that I've seen, it kind of supports that. And I would, I would agree that the barbershop is a very nice place for men to socialize. Maybe we need to change the name of your business to Jarrell's Barbershop and Country Club. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good idea. We could do that.